Number five on this list is the Jora Gumo. So before we get too deep into this entry, I want to start off by saying that I hate spiders. As a kid, they were my worst fear, and I just had like zero love for them at all. And that's what makes the Jora Gumo especially terrifying to me. Jora Gumo are terrifying demon creatures who resemble large, dangerous spiders. They have the ability to shapeshift, though, and can sometimes appear as beautiful women. Gajin Po says, translated to English, Jora Gumo means woman spider. However, the Kanji can also mean entangling bride or whore spider. They are cunning and appear as seductive young women. They feed on young men who fall for their tricks, trapping them in their webs and devouring them slowly. There are several stories based on the Joragumo. In Tonogusa, a young warrior encounters a beautiful woman. Realizing she's a yokai, he strikes her with his sword and she flees to the attic. There, they find a dead spider about 30 centimeters long and surrounded by decay bodies. In Izu, Joran Falls is home to a Joragumo. The legend says a woodcutter encountered the spider when she tried to drag him behind the waterfall. He escaped, warning the village to stay away, but an outsider met the Joragumo. Surprisingly, she let him live as long as he never spoke of it. Unfortunately, the man was the opposite of Koi. The story diverges from there, but most virgins end with him entangled in spiderweb and wishing he'd kept his mouth shut. So not only my not a fan of spiders, but I'm also a young man. Literally the exact food that this beast is determined that they like. Also, how the heck am I supposed to know if this nice pretty lady just wants to go out for coffee with me or put me in her web and eat me? The legend is thought to make people question their choice in partners more, but if it's actually true, then be very careful of the Joragumo. Number four on this list is the Nurikabe. Nurikabe is super interesting and very different from a lot of other entries that we have on this list. I suppose that's because in all honesty, these Nurikabe are a bit more derpy than they are scary. However, if you underestimate them or don't treat them as a threat, then that's where you're going to run into problems. The name Nurikabe translates to plaster wall, and that's a very good description of what these creatures actually are. These creatures are said to manifest as a big wall that blocks the way of travelers, an invisible obstacle that will appear to foreigners and send them in weird directions. They're so tall that you can't climb over over them and you won't be able to go around them. You'll be forced to change your direction. This is the extent to what the Nurikabe will do. They aren't going to hunt you down and kill you. They're not going to cause natural disasters or curse you or anything like that. They'll just block your path. And even though this doesn't seem like a big deal, well, it kind of is. The amount of stories that people have had about getting dangerously lost out in the middle of nowhere due to these things is insane. These are just the stories that actually get back to the public too because a lot of times, people never make it back to society. These wall creatures prey on those unfamiliar with the area, so you'll naturally completely lose your bearings if you need to go around them. These days, Nurikabe aren't super menacing because we live in a world with cell phones and a GPS, but back when we didn't have such things, these were extremely dangerous. Locals would always warn people before they went on journeys to be careful of the Nurikabe and always keep track of where they'd been. A mischievous plaster wall who back in the day took quite a few lives. Number three on this list is the Kappa. Kappa are gross little creatures that can be very tricky and menacing. Gajanpa says this small human-like creature has a shell like a turtle, green scaly skin, and a plate on its head that must be filled with water at all times to stay alive. They live in Japan's rivers, lakes, and other waterways. In Shintoism, Kappa are respected as gods of water, and statues of them can be sometimes found at shrines around Japan. Kappa quirks include having an affinity for cucumbers, Numbers, and never breaking a promise. In the urban legend version, a more menacing kappa loves to pull lost children and animals into the water to drown and eat. They still like to eat cucumbers, but also raw human intestines. Cucumbers! Cool, love it. Human intestines, not so cool, don't love it. For any of our Pokemon fans out there, these little guys remind me a lot of the Pokemon Lombre, which would be really cute if they weren't trying to steal our children and animals and then also devour them. Now, it's unclear if these Kappa ever were humans at one point or if they're just a mythical animal. A lot of their characteristics are similar to humans, so it wouldn't surprise me if somehow these creatures evolved from humans or maybe devolved in this case. Either way, human or not, these beasts may look cute on the outside, but they're not to be trifled with. 
Keep your kids and your pets close if you intend to take a stroll by some Japanese rivers anytime soon. Number two on this list is the Onro. Onro are not the sort of spirits that you want to be bringing to some sort of social gathering. Not only because they are super dangerous and could literally kill you, but honestly, they're just a major buzzkill. The word Onro translates to vengeful spirit or wrathful spirit, and in folklore and legend, that's pretty much exactly what they are. Vengeful spirits who have returned to the world of the living with the goal of causing harm to those who wronged them when they were living. These spirits have the power to manipulate things in our physical world, and I'm not just talking about opening a door or something small like that. They can fully change the weather and cause natural disasters to hit entire cities. This is extremely scary, because if an entire city, let's say, wronged this spirit while they were alive, then they're going to exact their revenge on that entire city. Now, a lot of times these spirits are portrayed as women with jet black hair and a very pale and almost deathly complexion. It doesn't have to be women though. That's just simply how the media has shown them to be up until this point. A male Onryo could be just as likely if that spirit is holding on to some serious trauma from their life in the living. Usually people who have been murdered or had their entire lives ruined due to the selfishness of others will become Onryo. It's a lesson to all people that are living to be kind to those around you, not only just because that it's the right thing to do, but also because having an Onryo come after you isn't the best idea. And number one on this list is the Gasha Dokuro. So this mythical being is really not something that you'd want to run into. Gajin Paul writes, The poor unfortunate bones of those who've perished on the battlefield turn into the Gasha Dokuro. These yokai form in places where masses of normal skeletons lie, such as in villages after famine or disease has wiped out the population. Because they died without a proper burial or funeral rites, the souls and bones come together and create one giant skeleton 15 times the size of an average person. The skeleton specters feed on lone travelers biting their heads off, feasting on their bones, and drinking their blood. Dracula style, guys. It's like some sort of boss from Castlevania. And it truly does feel like a boss in a video game or television show. A 15 foot tall giant skeleton that's been made from the dead bodies of the soldiers who perished here. Like, really think about how horribly terrifying a creature like this would be. You would also have no possible chance of winning in a battle against it because how can you kill something that's already dead? Yokai says, The earliest record of a Gasha Dokoro goes back over 1,000 years to a bloody rebellion against the central government by a samurai named Terra no Masakado. His daughter, Takayasha Him, was a famous sorceress. When Masako was eventually killed for his revolt, his daughter continued his cause. Using her black magic, she summoned a great skeleton from the bodies of dead soldiers to attack the city of Koyoto. If this beast of a creature can take on an entire city by itself, then I definitely don't want to be running into it by my lonesome. Kicking off at number five, the Gengganga. And our first entry heads us off to Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, as this particular undead revenant has been morphed and shaped into a few different depictions throughout the history of Scandinavia. Now, although the Draugr of Scandinavian legend is perhaps their most prolific of folklore abominations, and this particular entry functions in a similar way, the Gengganga likes to do things a little differently. Derived from the prefix Gen, which roughly translates to forward or towards, and then Ganga, which is derived from a word meaning foot or walk. The Genganga roughly translates to walking after death. And I needn't say no more to give you guys an idea about where this one's going, right? As the legend goes, the Genganga were the corpses of the dead that had reason to return to the mortal plane. Usually, people that had been murdered or people that had committed suicide would return to their town and village after clawing their way from their own graves. Throughout the Viking Age, the Genganga were seen throughout several sagas, such as the Gretis and the saga of Eric the Red. Here, much like the Draugr, they were often slayed and easily defeated by their heroes. But in a more contemporary setting, as Scandinavia became Christianized, the Genganga became a sort of undead, violent, zombie vampire that would break into the homes of their unsuspecting victims to spread disease. Whilst they were sleeping, they would attack people with their dodding kenyip, which translates to the dead man's pinch, and when they awoke, their victim's skin would be sunken and blue, infected by the plague of the Yenganga. 
That's not very nice. Swinging in at number four, the Liko. And for this one, we're heading over to the most intriguing, captivating, and equally terrifying kingdom of Slavic mythology and folklore, which, other than Celtic, comes in as one of my personal favourite European folktales. Because we've all got a list of that, right? Now, Slavic lore is mainly focused on the balance of good and bad luck, and the Liko is perhaps the personification of the latter as the cultural embodiment of all evil and misfortune. Otherwise known as the Licho or Liho in several other Eastern European countries, the Liko is often described as an elderly woman dressed entirely in black, with one distinctive, terrifying eye peering out of her darkened veil. In other versions, the Liko also appears as a male goblin-like creature that is often found perching on tree branches or farmers' fences, peering silently at its victim. That's a pretty creepy image, right? In ancient times, the Liko was often thought to be a servant of death itself, and any quiet appearance that it made would mark the end of their days for whoever first glimpsed it, and in many cases, even entire villages. During pre-Christian times, Slavic villages would conduct a ritual to ward off the Liko during times of plague and famine, where they'd carve a feminine-like idol with one eye and then burn it on a pyre in an effort to combat the malevolence of the native Liko. In one particular tale, a local blacksmith was beset upon by Liko, but just as she was about to eat him, he bargained with her that he was a legendary crafter and could forge for her anything that she liked. She chose an eye so she could finally have two to see with, and the blacksmith agreed. He told her that he'd have to bind her down whilst he hammered in the new eye so that she didn't make any sudden movements. And when the Liko was securely tied to the chair, the blacksmith shoved a red hot poker through the Liko's one good eye. That's one way to do it, right? Next up at number three, Filiath. And whilst this particular entry may perhaps be a little familiar to you, it nonetheless still holds its own as one of the most intriguing cases of ancient folklore colliding with the modern era. In Scottish folklore, the Fearliath, otherwise known in Scots as Amphirliath Moor, or otherwise otherwise known as the Big Grey Man of Ben McDewey, this creature is said to haunt the summit and mountain passes of Ben McDewey, the highest peak in the Cairngorms and the second highest peak in the whole of the British Isles. Obviously, down to his incredibly remote residents, few encounters with the Grey Man have occurred in folklore, but those who witnessed him described it as an impossibly tall figure, covered head to toe in short hair, surrounded by a strange, uneasy fog. As word of the Grey Man passed throughout the Highlands, remarks about hearing a strange, otherworldly howl began to find their way into folklore, and it is often thought that the Grey Man was a part of a grouping of Grey people. In fact, as you may have managed to piece together, culturally, the Grey Man of Ben McDewey has been the strongest correlation to the Native American folklore of the Sasquatch, all the way at the top of a mountain in Scotland. Who knew? The thing is though, although the ancient lore of the Highlands told tales about the strange giant folk that lived at the top of the peaks of the Cairngorms, this particular folktale still regularly emerges in recent times. In fact, dozens of contemporary figures have cited the Grey Man, with notable encounters beginning in 1891, and the most recent being back in 1958. You see, many climbers across the Cairngorms regularly warn of running into the Grey Man to this day, and the legend of the Fear Lath seemingly still lives on. Next up, Number two, Koshai the Immortal. And this guy is equal parts horrifying and equal parts comically awesome. And in fact, Koshai the Immortal, also known as Koshai the Deathless, is one of the most prolific figures in Russian and Slavic folklore, often filling the role of the big bad archetypal male antagonist to many of their mythologies and cautionary tales. Koshai the Immortal serves as the masculine counterpart to the terrifying Baba Yaga, the woods witch that roams the wild in her hut built upon the legs of a giant chicken. Isn't folklore awesome? Although Koshai is a malevolent, formless entity, he often appears as a gaunt, bony, grizzled old wizard with a long grey beard clutching a sharp serpentine dagger. In many folk tales, Koshai was depicted as riding naked throughout the wild on the back of a giant white stallion, searching for young women to kidnap and take back to his evil citadel in the dark parts of the wilderness. The thing is, though, although his origins are relatively unknown, the most common proponent of Koshai's lore is the spell that he cast upon himself to make himself immortal. As the legend goes, Koshai the Immortal has buried his soul inside a series of nested objects that he has hidden far away on a remote island. On the island stands a tall oak tree, and at the bottom of the oak tree is a large oak chest. Buried inside the chest is a large hare, and within the hare is the corpse of a duck. And within the duck is an egg, and hidden within the egg is a tiny needle that contains Koshai's soul. Throughout Slavic legend, no one even came close to 
to figuring out where his soul was hidden and because of that he was free to continue his malevolent reign for all eternity. Also a little side note but in one of the greatest video games ever created The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt an evil frost mage named Koshai is the main villain so there you go another reason to play The Witcher. And finally coming in at our number one spot the Curie. And this one is incredibly interesting because this particular folk legend comes from a very interesting part of England, Devon, an ancient place steeped in its own unique folklore and mystery and perhaps its most horrifying folklore monster is the Curie. As the legend goes out on the vast and bleak moors of Dartmoor, many people throughout the ages were lured away by the mythical will of the wisps, bright lights that transfix travellers and turn them to stray off the path where they would ultimately meet their deaths. By the those ancient graves, a strange dark demonic creature known as a curie would manifest where it would wait for passers by and then latch on to their necks. Once the curie had you over the course of several weeks, it would slowly convince you that it was real by whispering violent and evil thoughts into your ear. Sometimes you would dream of its existence and as you dreamt, you'd feel a cold touch on the back of your neck. Gradually over time, its presence would start to become more and more apparent and at night it would grab your leg, it would attack you in your dreams. It would change the face of your family members when you were talking to them into a dark twisted vision of itself. The Curry is a creation of pure evil and it would never make itself known to anyone else, forcing you to question your own sanity. And that's when the Curry had you. As you pled to be let go, it would start bargaining with you and it will promise you that if you return to the graves on the moors, you'll be free from its evil grasp and the torment will be over. Well, of course, once you did that, the Curry would tell you that the grave is just a few steps further but eventually, of course, you'd never reach your destination and eventually your body would succumb to exhaustion out on the moors as the curry kept you alive long enough to watch your body deteriorate in the elements where a new grave would form for the next victim. Yeah, if you're ever in Devon, guys, steer clear of the moors at night. It's a nice place though. Number five on this list is the El Culebron. I'd never heard of this legend before and I have to admit that it's pretty cool. This creature is native to Chile, and although it'd be pretty neat to look at from afar, it's definitely very dangerous. Scoop Whoop says El Culebron is basically an enormous hairy snake with a gigantic calf-like head. It's said that the creature resides inside of dark caves or remote forests, and it eats basically anything in its path. Legend also has it that the snake can draw wealth to anyone who's able to domesticate it, but trapping a Culebron is no easy feat. You have to find one in the wild, pluck three of its longest hair strands without getting eaten, and then put it in a bowl of milk. From that bowl, three baby Culebron will spring to life, and the strongest will eat the other two and become a full-fledged Culebron. From that point forward, owners have to maintain the snakes with sacrifices of animals or close relatives and leave the blood in a secret location that only the snake knows of. A very unique legend if you ask me. A very deadly giant snake creature that has the ability to bring you great wealth, but only if you can breed one and domesticate it. The story that I read off doesn't go into deep detail on how they actually bring you wealth, which would definitely be of interest to me. Maybe they're kind of like truffle sniffing pigs, except instead of truffles, they can smell gold or rare gems or something like that. Probably the reason that we don't know for sure how they bring us wealth is because so few have actually been able to be domesticated. First off, finding one of these creatures would be very hard because it means you'd need to trek through the jungles and mountains of Chile. Then, after finding one of the rarest creatures in the world, you also need to fight one of the most deadly creatures in the world and pluck three hair strands off of it. Then you need to fully domesticate another one of these beasts in your home after you grow it from a bowl of milk. There is a lot of room for error here guys and I doubt that many people have been able to complete all of the steps. Keep an eye out though for the El Culebron if you find yourself in Chile. Number 4 on this list is La Llorona. La Llorona is also known to many as the Weeping Woman. She is the ghostly apparition of a vengeful spirit who roams around by the water bemoaning the loss of her children whom she'd actually drowned herself. Scoop Whoop writes, According to a popular version of the tale, the Weeping Woman was once a beautiful maiden named Maria. She married a nobleman and gave birth to two sons. Her husband was a traveler and he rarely visited home. During their time apart, his feelings for her began to dull. But her husband still loved his sons and gave them all the attention that he left his wife bereft of. 
Once when he was in town, she caught him with a younger woman. Enraged, she took her sons to Santa Fe River and drowned them. She also was found dead on the riverbank a few days later, the cause of which remained unknown. It's said that when she reached heaven, she was denied entry until she found the souls of her sons. Thus, she wanders the earth looking to reclaim their souls. Dressed in a white gown and mourning for her sons, La Llorona takes lost and abandoned children and drowns them in hopes of recovering souls that will allow her entry into the afterlife. What an absolutely horrible woman. Clearly killing her own children didn't teach clearly killing her own children really didn't teach her anything at all, because now she's out there killing other people's children. This is a really scary legend in Mexico, and it's often why parents don't let their children go to areas with water by themselves. There's also the fear that La Llorona will be lurking somewhere around there thinking that she can use the souls of the young children instead of her own. You'd think that she would have realized by now that faking the souls of other people to get into heaven isn't gonna work, but by the sounds of it, she really doesn't sound like the brightest bulb in the bunch. Bright or not, she's still very dangerous, so be very careful whenever you're around water in Latin America. Number three on this list is La Seguepa. La Seguepa are interesting mythical creatures that are located in the Dominican Republic. They can be found in forests and around the rivers and lakes of the country. At first glance, they may look like a woman with long hair. However, upon closer inspection, one will see very unique characteristics. They're backwards facing feet. That's right guys, their feet actually face towards their own body, and this is one of the main differences between this creature and your standard human. Many people haven't paid close close enough attention to this detail, and because of that have been tricked into thinking that this is an actual woman. A fatal mistake if one of these things decides that you'd make for some good prey. The typical target of this creature are men that find themselves exploring the forest. These creatures are said to be incredibly smart and can often outwit the people that they run into. Also, rather surprisingly, their backwards feet make them run very fast, so even if you do catch on to this creature's intentions, running away would be very hard to do. The early the earliest mention of this creature was back in 1866, and since then there have been many stories written about these creatures. Those lucky enough to have an interaction and then make it out alive have documented their findings and tried to warn others from wandering into the forests unarmed. Sadly, these warnings aren't always heeded, and many men have disappeared over the years, never to be heard of again. Trekking through the lush forests of the Dominican Republic is already dangerous as is and requires lots of planning. Just don't forget to also plan for the last Seguepa if you do find yourself in this country. Number two on this list is the Yakumama. Ever seen the movie Anaconda? 1997 movie with J-Lo and Owen Wilson, all about a super massive snake that starts hunting this filmmaker? Well, I wouldn't be shocked if that snake was based off of the legend of the Yakumama. Cryptid Wiki says the Yakumama is a large snake up to 60 meters in length that is said to inhabit the Amazon River Basin. Local shamans say that the Yakumama travels to an area called the Boiling River. In the local legends, the Yakumama is said to be the mother of all marine life. It has the ability to suck up any living thing that passed within a hundred paces. The locals would blow on a conch horn before entering the river, believing after hearing the noise, the serpent would reveal itself if it was in the area. I can't can't describe to you guys how massive 60 meters in length would actually be. Titanoboa was an ancient creature that actually existed in the Amazon. It was a massive snake, the biggest the world has ever seen, that ruled over these parts and could swallow crocodiles whole. That creature, at its max, would grow up to 50 feet in length or 15 meters. So basically, Yakumama is four times the size of the biggest and deadliest snake that's ever lived. This thing would be able to to annihilate hundreds of humans at once. Even if the locals did blow on their conch and the snake did reveal itself, then there would literally be nothing that they could do. It would just eat them all and that would be that. Snakes are super cool, but not when they're 60 meters long and looking to devour me. Number one on this list is the Puchin. Puchin are very dangerous and deadly beasts and should not be underestimated under any circumstances. Cryptid Wiki says, The Puchin, a creature from the Mapuche mythology and Chilote mythology pertaining to southern Chile, was a feared shapeshifter which could instantly change into anything. It's often been described as a gigantic flying snake that produced strange whistling sounds while its gaze could paralyze an intended victim and permit it to suck its blood. It's often been reported as sucking blood from sheep. The creature can be eliminated by a maki. 
So Mackie and Casey who aren't familiar are medicine women and they're believed to be the only people capable of defeating this beast. Meaning that you could be the strongest warrior in the world, you could have taken down beasts and enemies in the hundreds before, but you would still fall to the Puchin if you weren't a Mackie. It's extremely hard to kill something if you can't even look at it and that's what this is like. Similar to Medusa in the way that it can paralyze you if you look at it, fighting this beast is near impossible. Aside from its ability to paralyze people, it's also extremely fast, extremely strong, it can fly, and it can also shapeshift into other dangerous creatures. Pray that you never run into this creature because it will assuredly be the last thing that you ever do.